What is up, people? As you can see, we got a new box of pickles. This is like the third one in three tutorials. Um, and we also have a little bit different script here. I, whoa. Yeah, you could do that. It's kind of cool. Anyways. Um, yeah, we have new script. It, it's basically the same as last time, so if you're running the last tutorial's script, it should be the same exact thing. Should be. The numbers might be a little different. But that was because I accidentally deleted the file. And I don't know where it went. It went to the cyber heavens. So anyways, we're going to learn about returning variables from the functions. Now I could already hear you bitching and whining. Why do we need to do that? Well, first we're gonna take this line out. What if we wanted to trace this function outside of the function? So in other words, we want to know what sum is after all these lines have been called. And you're like thinking, yeah, that's possible. And you'd be wrong. It is not possible. As you can see, access of undefined property sum. And basically, it's an error because you can't do that. Now you're like, why is sum undefined? Why? I mean, you called this function, it gave sum to two numbers and a number of it, it, it assigned a number to it. Why? I mean, if we were to trace this in here, you can obviously see that sum has multiple values to it. Well, that's the thing. You're actually not allowed. It's called the scope of a variable. You're not allowed to take variables that were declared inside of a function and use them outside of the function. It's called the scope. So the scope of sum is the function add two numbers. So the same for num1 and num2. Any parameters, their scope is the uh, function as well. They will be declared, created, and destroyed inside this function. So how are we supposed to get these numbers out? Well, that's what a return statement is for. Play some epic music for that. Like return. Return of the, of the king. Yeah, I'm sure some of you are like, wow, he just quoted Lord of the Rings. Anyways, you can run a trace on the function itself because the function is going to be returning a variable. And we all know that trace traces variables. So that's how they, this works. That wouldn't work before. It didn't return anything, so a trace statement won't like trace nothing. And as you can see, that works. So you can trace this, and you can take the number, because before we couldn't touch sum outside of the program, but now we could be like var random number equals this. So in other words, it's going to take sum, and the random number is going to equal whatever this, what, whatever is returned from sum. That is how we pull numbers out of functions. And it it I didn't trace it, but I fine I will. Jerks. Don't like hearing random bitching. There you go. 119. It worked. So that's one thing. That's actually two things. The return and of course the scope. Both are very important because different things have different scope like these variables are declared inside the action this precise frame but for some reason they last throughout the entire timeline not just this frame you really have to know the scope of different numbers or else you well not numbers variables so that way you understand where you can use them and when you can't use them so for example I could actually take since the scope is the entire program I could put apples in here. 
um, trace. It's, it's kind of dumb that you can't like so it'll trace it like multiple times. <laughs> yeah, nine, nine, nine. Anyways, so basically, if the scope is large, you can put it inside of functions, but the reverse isn't true. And another thing I'd like to touch on is data typing. Actually, no. All you need to know is that just like the other type of data typing, you need to type uh, data type your return statement. And to do that, you just put a colon after your parameters. Type in whatever data type you're returning. And I'm only doing numbers for now, but you could data type sound channel, sound channel, not sound and channel. You used to be able to data type sound, but they broke the classes up. Anyways, um, so yeah, you have to data type it because that is like the number one shortcoming of Flash that you have to, actually it's not even a shortcoming. Um, in other, let me uh, show you my Eclipse project here. In other programs, you actually have to call an int. An int is a number or a string. There is no variable. It's all like either string or int. And with this, you're data typing it. So it's basically like any other language. You always have to data type, no matter what language you're working in. You also always have to comment, but this is such a small program, I'm not going to comment. I'm a lazy programmer, which you should not be. So you have to like comment and say sum is underscore 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 like whatever it does so that way a programmer entering the program knows what you're doing with it and yeah that's my whole spiel about data typing and this lesson was very short but it's going to now be able to lead into doing stuff with the actual stage like doing the cool stuff that you really want to do so we got through all the boring stuff in like four or five videos and now we can actually go do stuff with what we've learned. So join me on the next tutorial and I will see you later.